going on, guys? Yo. Live from Misfit HQ, Seth, Sherb, Drew, Hunter here to talk about, can you believe it? Cycle one. What it's the back. fuck is cycle one doing in May? I don't know. Uh, I feel like we just had this talk uh, not that long ago because we did. Cycle one, we're getting prepared again for the open in October. So it's kind of crunch time. Um, off season mode's already over. Normally we give people like two and a half, three months of off season. Unfortunately, we had to have a transition year because of the way the, the season's changing. This is our transition year and your off time has been cut to like five weeks. No off time. <laughs> so we're back. <laughs> uh, sorry. It's just the way it works. Um, <clears throat> so with this, obviously you are probably aware by now that some changes are coming. If you haven't watched our previous videos about our huge announcements uh, on top of cycle one, the launch of Misfit Wad is approaching, right? May 6th or May, the night of May 5th, evening of May 5th. Uh, the, the next post you'll see, the main blog is Misfit Wad. And just a quick uh, summing up of what that is again for you guys. It is a GPP dose of the blog, essentially. It's one workout highlighted per day that'll give you guys a really solid exercise stimulus that will vary day to day um, pretty greatly. So you'll have your strength in there, you'll have your conditioning in there, you'll have sprints in there, you'll have gymnastics in there, you'll have all kinds of things, um, but it'll be a one and done sort of dose for those who are not really that interested in competing anymore or training or taking it too serious, but still need their daily dose of fitness. And that's what it's there for. Um, and for me, there'll be a hatchet you. version, which I Good will point. further scale, <laughs> which I will scale <laughs> past, <laughs> past the hatchet. Actually, for me... It'll go. I'll be like, all right. So if we went from Misfit Wad here to Hatchet Drew Misfit Wad. Wad, Drew Wad will live somewhere, maybe down on the floor, <laughs> somewhere south. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'll yeah. say though that like th when you say when you when people throw out the term GPP, like they think like old school main site style. Sometimes it's like, oh, that's like a silly like workout, like practice holds for a bunch of time or something like that. Like these are. These are still high level workouts. Yeah. Um, a I'm lot just of people. throwing shade at HQ right now. Shit, saying, this uh, is actual GPP. Shit, no, <laughs> no, not what I meant. But uh, might have been what I meant. Like, <clears throat> don't don't go in, don't be like discouraged or think that it's not going to be or that it's going to be easy or it's not going to be like the level that you've come to expect from the blog. Like day one is. <laughs> Yeah. Tee -hee -hee. I think yeah. Day one's I mean, my rest day. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at it right yeah. now. Monday is my, my rest, rest day, day. now. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's really, it, it has to be this way because it has to continue to give people who just need to get in and out of the gym or maybe they own a gym and they have an hour a day and they need to prepare and they need 30 minutes to warm up like I do. Like I need to move around like for 30 minutes before I think about taking on anything heavy or anything skill based. I need to just like move around for a while. And so this will provide that one and done, uh, keeping your fitness where it needs to be probably accelerating it in some areas. Um, it's there. It's, it should be fun. It should be celebrated. Should be willing to post these scores online. Come, you know, look at what other people are doing and just get a feel for, you know, what misfits are taking on each day. And then if you want more, of course, we'll dive into the blog, the, the original blog and hatchet. And we still offer masters, which we'll do in a whole other episode to give you guys the idea of what you should expect. Um, but yeah. So, uh, before we dive into this, this, I know we're, we're actually shooting this in the future. It's the future, future right now. Future, so future. do you guys have anything on the horizon you want to talk about and plug before we get into this? You have to guess five weeks out or whatever. Mm, Not even, actually. I think like sharpentheaxeco.com <laughs> will still be live on the internet. Oh, sure. Jesus, so you'll so. be able to go there <laughs> Please. and look at some cool stuff. And beginning in May, but extending all the way out through August, we've got some really cool summer collection kind of things coming out. So some new things guys, we never had. You guys took our store. Literally from us on spring cleaning. Yay. Hat tip to you. Um, and now the new stuff's going to be coming in. So sharpentheaxeco.com. And competition prep wise, last but not least, we, we have the French throwdown. So if you're involved with that, it's going to be right about now <laughs> yeah. in the future that you're going to need to get started potentially a little bit sooner. Yeah. Um, but as we've stated in the past, you can follow that program week one through wherever you hit and then jump to the deload week, right. the week that you're traveling. Um, so for, for everyone else, good luck because you're hopefully already prepared. And then for <laughs> people doing the French throwdown, which is sort of on an Island on its own out at the end of June, 
Um, the last chance that you have competition prep starts now, and that's under the <clears throat> workout tab. You got it. <laughs> yeah. you got it. Hey. It's somewhere. You got it. I'll just say with all these changes too, it might be a good time for remote coaching. I mean, we have the new features. You can now pay monthly for remote coaching yes. rather than all up front. Every if time's you, a good time for it. Yeah, now. If you need some guidance, like, hey, Misfit Watt's great, but what else should I do if I or should I do something else? If you want that kind of, you know, advice or feedback, or maybe you want to know if Misfit Watt's doing it for you. Remote coaching would be a great way to figure out if that's the right stimulus for you or should you look for something else? And I know for me personally, as a remote coach, I'm trying to, when I'm getting to know an athlete, pull the pieces apart and try to figure out, you know, how's the monostructural look? How does the movement efficiency, the gymnastics, ta-da, that is how cycle one is programmed. So exactly how. from uh, the standpoint of like, we're all the way out at the open, it can be a little bit more challenging versus cycle one is here. We have all this stuff again on its own. And we can build, you know, together as, you know, coach athlete relationship. So very good timing for that. Also, if you're one of the 734 people that qualified for the CrossFit Games this year as an individual or a team. Only a few. Yeah. There's probably thousands with, with yeah, teams sure. and masters and everything else now with how many countries. I don't even know how many, but it's a lot. We will have a games program available uh, in about <clears throat> five to six weeks from the time you're seeing this video. So um, get in as much weakness work as you can between now and then if you're prepping for it cycle one is actually a really good place to do that because everything is kind of so separated out um with the bitch work being separate gymnastics volume in there a volume strength cycle in there it's it, the working on olympic lifting lifting technique again while hitting some heavy um sets so it's all there for you if you want to pick and choose and kind of go through this leading up to games training games training as i've already kind of prefaced unfortunately like the more and more I dig into this will probably be the most boring training of the year for a lot of people now. In the past, I've made it the most hype hero wad craziness because you never know what you're going to see at the games. But it turns out year after year, if you don't have a solid engine and you're not able to do the basics really, really well for high reps, you end up eating too few points and you live at the bottom of the leaderboard the whole time. The people who excel in certain areas or can you know have that engine and have those skills and know how to put a workout together, those are the people that finish high, get those points and do really, really well. So it's going to have a little home run capacity. Yeah. Too. It's going to be really structured this year. Um, it's, it's not a bad thing though. I mean, we talk, bad. we it's talk just, all the time about <clears throat> like programming's great, but it's what you make it. And yeah. the people that we know for a fact that like put themselves into the programming and take that onus on themselves and don't say like, Oh, well you wrote it down and I didn't get better. What the hell? Those are the people that are going to be following this program. <laughs> yeah. Those are the people that are going to know, like that looks boring on paper, but you know, make some decent adaptation and running yeah. for an entire hour. I, I will like, say you'll be able to see, you'll be able to like almost live track your progress through it because a lot of you, a lot of it will be linear progression. A right. lot of it will be adding time to the amount of time you're in attention on a row or a running. A lot of it will be sets of gymnastics, you know, that are probably pre-fatigued in some sense that you'll start to see the numbers increase. Like you'll be able to see your performances go up and your ability to adapt to it over six, seven weeks, whatever it is. But it's just, not as sexy as the year-round GPP fun and the wild conditioning right. stuff. It's just, I mean, if you want to go to the games, ooh, I mean, right. you can't go. You can't go there that have never rode for you know longer than five k, and I'll expect that yeah. you can row for three hours. Okay, like yeah. it makes total sense. We have to have those those bases checked off. And I just think up. I just think it's time. Like we know enough. We've I don't know. We've been at the game seven straight years or whatever as a company and coached Phew. athletes. Pretty much every one of those years, whatever it is, and uh, yeah, it's just it, the. <clears throat> the writing's on the wall as to what it takes to really get good there. And as much as we like to have our fun and our program is probably like, you know, regarded as the most fun and crazy and out there and like people really enjoy it. 40 few, weeks out of the year, we'll take it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. the, few, the six, seven weeks that you need to grind down and get ready for this, like, you know, this is what you want. So be prepared for it. And I'm excited to put it out there. I think people are going to make huge progress in a short amount of time. But anyway, just prefacing. Most of you are not even gonna get to see it so what do you care you're, you're, doing, the, you're doing the bodybuilding stuff yeah. right now and you're yeah, so sore you can't even walk up the stairs so like you're, you're not even thinking about that so anyway uh all right cycle one uh we're gonna jump in we're gonna chat about the strength prep and the strength so last time you guys did cycle one uh you had a pseudo strength piece that prefaced the volume squat cycle the uh deadlifting and the the pressing that we had the higher sets um, and the heavy reps as well for pressing. We call it the strength prep. And this year we're bringing it back. Of course I had, we all had a lot of uh, really good feedback about how it prepared them 
to move these heavy weights three days a week or four days a week, really, um, along with everything else going on. Some of the movements have been changed. Uh, not a lot of them, but a few of them have. Like, for instance, um, Drew had an idea for a, a movement at one point, and I kind of adapted it into the uh, second Those things day. hurt really bad, by the front The front-to-back lunges? Yeah, they're yeah. rough. So instead of just going kind of in a walking oh, yeah. pattern or just a reverse lunge or just a front lunge, we're going to add both to it so that you just kind of get a different range throughout and really open those hips up and get that pressing power on both sides before you go into squatting, you know, heavy reps every week. So things like that, a lot of the stuff's still the same. We're still going to try to prep you guys to get in better positions for both the lifting, uh, the strength work, sorry, and the Olympic lifting. So we still have like snatch grip press. We still have SOTS press front and back. We still have all kinds of things like that. This is not meant to take 45 minutes. This is meant to be done basically straight after your, your warm up. So you're, you're slightly sweaty. Your joints are feeling lubed up a little bit. You're ready to move. You go through the strength prep stuff. A lot of it's suggested uh, sets and reps. You can modify that as needed. The weights are suggested. You can modify that as, as needed. It's essentially an additional warm up to prime your legs to move heavy weight and prep yourself in your CNS to accept that load that's coming for both the strength and the Olympic lifting. Wake up. No, yeah. no sense in doing it your first set. Do it before you get to your first set. Like, be ready to go. Yeah. So that's what it's there for. for the first two sets of your five by five are not meant to be warm up sets. Well, do the, do well, the strength not. prep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's straightforward. I don't. I don't think I heard a single person complain about the extra work. It does take a little extra time, but it <clears> ends up actually enabling you to move faster through the strength and the Olympic lifting because you are moving while you're warmed up. Um, the strength work again is very straightforward, like years past. I think it actually is the same cycle as years past. Uh, there might be one or two little caveats added in there, but nothing out of the ordinary. This is the time of year that we're trying to build that great base of strength and we have less time than ever to do it before the open. So that's what we're jumping back into the volume squat cycle, which has worked for many, many people. Um, there may be, well, not maybe there will be a additional cycle that we used last year that will come out. Um, probably around this time in a template form, weakness template. It's going to be similar to what we did for hatchet last year for the squatting to give options because not everybody is able to handle this. Some hatch, hatchet athletes can because, I mean, frankly, if I was considering myself a hatchet athlete, my 80%, not that crazy. You know what I mean? Like I can move up and I can make faster progress because my max has not really been established in quite some time. So I can make that progress. Um, but there needs to be an, an option for people who don't handle the volume squat cycle that, well. Well, it's also that athlete that maybe took a step back and go, all right, the blog doesn't make sense for my time commitment. I'm going mm -hmm. to go to hatchet now. I have done plenty of the blog lifting and I still like that feel of how I'm getting stronger yep. with that type of programming, but the hatchet weights make more sense. So you right. know, kind of have that middle ground too. I've had a lot athlete. of luck remote coaching with 5% works really well across the board. Chop 5% off every single set, yep. every single yep. week and just make it just a little bit more about movement. Um, and over the long haul, you'll get more out of that. Yeah. So if you're one of those people that you're grinding through these sets and you're just like, you gotta be kidding me. Just do the exact same cycle, take 5% off and you'll be fine. Yep. Another really good option, but we will have a template, a three day a week template for, uh, linear progression strength work. If you would rather use that available on the pro tier. So if you want that, it'll be there. Um, Olympic lifting, very similar to last year, a couple little tweaks, nothing major really working on that power position again, trying to get rid of that heave or that crazy dive under or whatever it is you're doing. Just learn how to extend vertically and then move your feet horizontally and then be under the bar. Sounds simple, but Isn't. in practice, I don't know that many people that do it that well. So um, I really like the, the kind of mandatory warm up, yeah. that lighter power position stuff because people... If, if it wasn't there, probably wouldn't do it like Definitely the, the most deliberate it. athletes would. But when it's on paper, it's like, OK, that's part of the program <laughs> forces you to. And then you still get the opportunity to put a little bit more weight on the bar with those progressively lower positions in the You're in the EMOM stuff. Accepting responsibility for the fact that you can move really well. I'm yep. not saying you do move really well. <laughs> I'm saying you can. And that's something that's really important for me as a coach. I try to trick people into moving really well by removing variables is what we're doing here. And then it's like, there's no excuse. Like no, no, slow down good. or, you know, understand your movement. So if you warm up like that every time you understand that, oh, my torso can go from here to here and then back up. It's easier than it going like yeah. this. 
Like that makes sense. It'll help, it? it'll help you really identify your faults. If you don't have a coach pretty damn quick too, when your footwork is a certain way in the warm up, and then it's a certain other way in, you know, lifting moderate to heavy singles, doubles or triples. Like we understand there's a breakdown in that chain. And if you are having trouble figuring out why, like just go back down to the basics, start at the top, work your way down and figure out where it is that you're going wrong. Where's the weight shifting at the wrong time? Like where are your knees in relation to everything? Where's your torso? I mean, like, the biggest, the biggest change that I saw in my Olympic lifting was from this cycle was that I'm king of pull as high as you can and try to dive right. under it. And this actually teaches you how to snatch the correct way, yeah. which is not using your hips to heave the bar, but actually learning to be active and pulling under the bar, which what we'd say is probably the biggest fault for CrossFitters is they can all pull the bar really high, but right. they don't understand the concept of pulling under the bar and that's what the cycle, I mean, these movements and are all about. The 40 to 60% is, is prescribed there because <clears throat> I, as a coach, feel like you do need some tension on the bar to feel what it's like to do this correctly. Great. But if you do, if you have too much, then we have breakdown. And if you don't have enough, then you can cheat. So there's this middle ground where you need to have some weight on the bar to move and actually feel like what it's like to go through the range of motion. That's what we're doing here. And 40 to 60 is nice because like, I know for me personally, I can't, be, be just based on grip strength, like I can't put enough weight on the bar right. to be able to do anything. Right. And, and and like that's sort of like where where do you fit within the spectrum? And that's why we don't do the actual strength work from that position right. anymore. So yeah. Yes. So that's what you're gonna see as far as strength building goes. Cycle one's only five weeks. All the cycles will be like shortened by a week or so this year just because of the schedule. Like what choice do we have? We can't email them and ask them to push the Please. open back to November. <laughs> So, uh, we're doing the best we can with the time that we have, uh, bitch work, the significant changes that you'll find in bitch work. This is always the time of year when we emphasize this. We want the, want all different parts of that engine to be prepared for anything moving forward. So that's from the 15 second sprint window all the way to the 60 minute long run or row window and everything in between. Uh, that's what we have here. In the past, we've had it all mandatory. So every day you're doing bitch work. It worked fine. But again, with the shortened um, season, we I've made it four days a week instead of five days a week with very realistic options on the day that it's not mandatory. And when I say realistic, I mean things that you would know whether you need to choose that and prioritize that or not. So one of the things you're going to see most often on days where bitch work's not mandatory is a long piece, long bike, long run. You need rope. to do that and you skip it. We're not friends. Right. We have no chance of being friends. And you damn well know if you're yeah. the Don't one that needs to do to it. <laughs> and so there's no question, like you should know if you're the one that needs to do it. So it's right there dangling in front of you. If you don't want to do bitch work five days a week, like better have a damn good reason not to. Uh, I do want you to hit the other conditioning with it, but you can easily skip out on a deadlift one week. If your issue is long running or long cycling, probably you're a good deadlifter if that's the case. Like mm, okay. it's usually one, you know, one side of the spectrum or the other. So. The, the options, the pick two to pick three are very, uh, well, I should say pick one other days. That one day is a pick two to pick three based on what you need for volume. The, the things that are mandatory are very few and you kind of go based on what you need on that day. Um, there's a dose of gymnastics in there, a dose of strength and a dose of uh, endurance work. So if you haven't figured that out by now, you really shouldn't be on the blog anyway. You should be following Mr. Get a, Wall. Get a remote coach. Yeah. We get a decent amount of questions about the fasted cardio, which yeah. has popped into the competition prep. Yeah. And this actually would be, with the way that the day is structured, yeah, it, a really good way to see if this definitely. is something that can work. You want to talk about that for someone who says, what the hell is that? Yeah, absolutely. So essentially, I mean, the name says it all. You work out typically in the morning without eating before you go. And we're trying to create you know, more robust energy systems where your body can actually call on body fat, um, you know, fatty acids while you're working out so that if you do achieve your ultimate goal of making it to, you know, I mean, some of these sanctionals now are turning into games like atmospheres. Prep. Yeah. Yeah. Games, yeah. 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 And that's where you would need this the most. That's where you need to not be that person that needs, you know, carbs like boom 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 after every single workout and you're going to crash because we know what it's like when you're when you're working out and you're trying to get or you're coaching and you're trying to get athletes to eat they don't want to eat they don't want to do that so you don't necessarily have to change your diet or anything like that you're just making sure that your body's okay with that and after having a fast for you know eight to ten hours from sleeping your body's going to be ready to do this and all you're doing is kind of pushing that a little bit further so I think that's going to be very useful for a lot of people, uh, especially 
I just like that if if it is your weakness and that's what you're adding in, to start your day with that and just like, okay, now I'm in the zone. Like I've got this you done. You haven't used like, resources yet. You just woke up. Like not much should hopefully stress you out at that point. Your day right. is just beginning. And I mean, having done a decent amount of the fasted cardio, like the translation to other movements and how your body feels and your legs don't pump out as soon and you teach your body how to like flush waste out of your legs, like all the benefits from fasted cardio more than just like, Hey, I'm better at biking for a long time are immense. And to me, like that's why I would want someone to do I, it. I usually find even it. when I'm doing, well, this is any time during the day, but even more so in the morning when you have more day left, mental clarity after doing a piece 30 yeah, minutes for like or the longer. weekend warriors, like, yeah. like maybe you're not trying to go to the CrossFit games, but it makes you feel a lot better. It does. It really does. Um, so that's there. The two other things I'll talk about with bitch work before we uh, keep moving. Um, everything this cycle is time-based. So nothing is distance-based. Um, everything is going to be trying to accumulate calories or accumulate distance in set amounts of time. That'll change in cycle two, but every single thing will be time-based that allows for really both anyone to participate and those who have specific goals to hit distances with time to be able to find paces um, a little easier. So everything's time-based. The other thing I'll mention is uh, one day a week, there are some very aggressive sprints. And so the, the time windows are 15 seconds, 25 seconds, and 35 seconds. <laughs> Fuck. And they'll, they'll go, the they'll seconds, increase that's as not you cool, go. cool, bro. Outside of the 30 second window. Yeah, sorry. 35. Not cool. If you're elite, you would think it's cool. Man, I really not, like, so. I really like the time-based <laughs> stuff, especially on machines. Like the easiest one that comes to mind is the assault bike. Like yeah. me versus Sherb. A uh, 15 calorie sprint is very different for me, especially after two or three of them than it is for him. But you put that time window in there and it, it's that is like a cust a super easy to customize like bitch work piece. Yeah. And, and the score doesn't matter. It's the built effort. in scaling. Yeah, yeah, the, built yeah in. exactly. The, the number of calories is only relevant if by some chance we had the leaderboard up and going and you needed to measure your dick against somebody else. It's a but test. The, the, Someone the else is like the, the same size and height and weight as you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Wait, with what? Measuring what exactly? Uh, yeah. Um, so said what I said. The, real, uh, the real focus here is, is effort mm -hmm. and understanding that it's okay. Actually, in these circumstances, the rest is significant uh, for them. But when you're doing eight 15 second sprints, five, six, or I should say six, seven, and eight might be less than the first five. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need to take more rest, that's also okay. Uh, these are just, I mean, it's a made, it's a huge template. It's recommendations. We don't know how you're going to recover if you need an extra 30 seconds than I need, or vice versa. So take the time you need and focus on. The effort. That's yeah. that's what yeah. it's all about. So, when in doubt, go longer with the, with yeah. the rest. You can actually push. Yeah, it there's no no one's winning anything. It's not like just it's not cheating. If you take more rest, just wait until you feel recharged and hit it again. And that's how you should approach it the entire cycle. And realize when you get to the 35 second window, it's. I mean, you might dead. be you might be toast after one or two, and you only have a few of them to do. But still, and I think similar to the Olympic lifting, like you can either deliberately break this down and like shoot to constantly improve every week in the bitch work uh like like with those olympic lifts positionally and stuff or you can just go through the motions in the bitch work because it's all time based right. the clock will save you unlike you know True. when you're biking or rowing for distance um and that gives you the opportunity to either a be lazy about it which we hope you don't do or two like really take uh like take responsibility and know you're going to push hard. Is that like a Tommy and, boy uh, thing? Yeah. Yeah. A two a and D. Yeah. And, <laughs> and bullet and points dash. and dash. Yeah. 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 I mean, it gives you so on. much of an opportunity though for information gathering. Like yeah. people really wanted to know, like, like 19 one was weird. Like yeah. people did not realize that like, cause I, you know, you watch people on like Instagram post after the first time they did it and they're like held pretty damn well on the rower and they went unbroken and their score wasn't that good because who thinks whoever does that in training, you know, puts their rower on top of the wall ball target and <laughs> right. like, you know, has one foot in like, didn't Arnie do it over the rower? Yeah. He squatted yeah, he, over he the squat, rail. Yeah. Squatted over the rail. You don't like rower. think about that kind of thing. <laughs> so when you're thinking about like, truly what can I hold on this thing? Yeah. Like no breaks, like no, nothing. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. This type of stuff makes it possible for you to focus on that as opposed to staring at you know, how many calories am I getting or whatever? You're just locked in on like, what's my pacing look like yep. and something my like wattage, this. My wattage, RPMs. I also deliberately went from higher intensity sprints 
to not necessarily lower intensity, but longer in duration, which w- w- doesn't in turn usually make it slightly lower intensity. So you're building from 15 to 35 because we want to see what your actual output is for 15 seconds. Like that's, you're essentially going to peak there and just start coming down as the time runs out. And that'll be what you can do. And from there, you'll then have to sort of guess or feel out what 25 seconds looks like, what 35 seconds looks like, which then translates to what does a minute or two look like? What does five minutes look like? So you're able to really, if you put this on a graph, you would significantly be able to see like where that drop off is and where your pacing is and versus the time you're on there. So if you want to get real nerdy with it, I mean, there's tools out there that'll do it. I do have one kind of odd suggestion for some of the bitch work (laughs) that talks about whether you would run on the runner or run outside. Yeah. I think that big boys belong outside. I think that's f- Rude. big boys as in like bigger people. Yeah. People okay. that people that really are able to manipulate the, the runner yeah. based on their body weight and their strength and their posterior right. chain. Cause I know for me personally, if I'm trying to compare apples to apples, like I can stay within the realm of certain people on the runner and no chance to keep up with them outside. Yeah. And there's just something about putting your hours in and learning how to move your body completely on its own, independent of, I think you can learn more about running, all this different stuff. So if you're super used to the runner and you're getting used to that and you can, you know, push the belt a little bit harder because you're stronger or bigger, I say get outside, at least for one cycle. So I'm not saying don't know how to use it, don't know how to pace on it, anything like that. I'm not trying to get rid of that for people because there is both. There is both like mandatory outside versus, Mm -hmm. versus being on the runner. But I think that if you are trying to like improve specifically at something like that. And you're a bigger athlete. Just go. I was just going to agree totally because Austin and I have done pieces where if we were outside running together, he would have left me way behind. It wouldn't even, I wouldn't have seen him. He'd gone, but on the runner it's, there's not as much of a gap. So I would hundred percent agree with that. Like unless it's mandatory and you're, you're essentially you're what? 93% posterior chain. Like yeah, I don't, have, I don't have any, on the front. In the front. And you got like 50 pounds on me. How come you not beat me on the runner? I don't know. Good question. <laughs> the race is too long. Uh, yeah, really good point. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Drew, but if one's going to get you to run and one's oh, going to yeah, steer yeah. you yeah, away, don't. go fucking and run. It's raining. <laughs> it's raining. And he said yeah. not to go on the runner. So, so yeah. I'm, out. I'm out. Yeah. Not doing it. Run, please. Please, God. Um, Gymnastics volume, this is like what we would call an extra piece in the past. It's all based on the amount of reps you're doing. Understand that these are easily scalable. You can just choose to do lower sets. So real quick example would be three rounds of 50 push-ups with three minutes rest. If 50 push-ups turns into doing 22 push-ups and then sitting on your knees until you can do three more and then two more, like your number is probably three rounds of 30 or 35 or something like that. This is just trying to get chunks of volume with rest and then repeated. Um, there's plenty of sets. There's sets where we try to force you to go unbroken on things to um, put the rest in there. It's kind of a mandatory thing. You wouldn't jump back up because you can't do it unbroken. So uh, there's all kinds of just, it's less about being under fatigued and more about A, moving better and learning how to do the movement a little more efficiently. And B, once you are getting better at that, actually getting some volume work <clears throat> in so that your muscular endurance on your pull or your push improves into cycle two, which of course will include some semblance of bitch gymnastics. So you'll, you'll have to have this down pat before we start to really fuck you up and then ask you to do the same thing. So, um, take advantage of this. This is the, one of the rare cases where if you weren't following like a weakness template or something like that, and you were going to follow this, uh, as is it's three days a week of pulling two days a week of pushing. And, um, you could add, well, you could add this in additionally. It's very much like a small dose of fitness overall. Uh, so you could do at least part of it. So this is something that I would not be afraid to add in to like mess up your CNS or make you like have worse recovery. It's just not that much volume, but it is enough that it can make a difference over five weeks. So don't do it every day as an extra piece. Like don't try to finish the blog every day. That's foolish. But if there's a day where you find yourself at 20 minutes and you want to do five minutes of strict pull-ups because it's written down there, like I don't see I any it. harm in that whatsoever. Um, this so. is one of those things with such a high return on investment though. Like if you need this and it's yep. not going to crush your CNS, you just have to think about the amount of progress that you can make. This is finally the year 2019 that you're not going to get to the open and say, should have worked on those. Yeah, no kidding. They're all right there. I'm looking right now. I'm looking at one week and it's like, oh, it'd be pretty well set up for anything yes. that would be thrown at me. 
And then obviously over the course of five weeks, we get more variation. So like, just if you need it, do it, pay attention to it. It's not going to crush your CNS. You're going to be able to really like pay attention to the way that you're moving and doing things because you won't be under, you know, too much CNS fatigue. So. And given that it's not in a bitch nastics format where you're breathing heavy, like another perfect opportunity to work on movement, even the most basic gymnastics, push-ups, pull-ups, strict variations, like you could, we could break that down nuts and bolts pretty easily. Such a big part of the open this year. Yeah. Think about the, the, the pre fatigue of, you know, it happened twice that, you know, two different scenarios where (laughs) this movement affected that movement so badly Yep. And the way that we look at it from a coaching standpoint is we say, okay, you got three rounds of 50 pull-ups. These have to be beautiful, right. perfect right. pull-ups. And then the next cycle, we're going to say, okay, now you got whatever, 20 burpees and 20 pull-ups. Can you still use your hips or whatever? Yep. That's the progression that you need to take. And this is step one of being like, can I do these right when the yep. only thing fatiguing them really is just themselves? And I think we're going to see continue it, the strict Gymnastics movements are certainly not going anywhere. I well, will Glassman see. has essentially said, if I want to change the programming, I will. Yeah. yeah. And we, he, did, he obviously we'll did this year. We'll see strict pull-ups. I like it. We'll see more strict handstand pull-ups. I don't think we're going to see thruster ladders at the games. He talked about how much he hated hey, those like three times. Who cares about thruster races? I only saw like the first half of the interview and he's like, thruster races are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I like how that team equates what all competitive CrossFit is with just yeah. thruster races. It kind of feels like that's what it should be called. The 2019 <laughs> thruster, thruster races. <laughs> uh, a great name. Yeah. That does feel like CrossFit and yeah. Okay. Last but not least, and there's nothing even to speak about uh, the conditioning. It's all standard Metcons, a whole lot more for time than for uh, than AMRAP. So really, it's it's volume based more so than like how hard you want to work in a given window uh, for the, the actual conditioning pieces. I feel like when I was finished writing my part of cycle one, that overall it's the most complete i think that I, that's ever been put together i feel the best about it and it's usually just a gut feeling that makes me feel that way but i, I do feel that way and um the conditioning pieces have like just an added element of sexiness because we are going to highlight so many of them on misfit wad that we really want it to be fun for you guys and enjoyable if you're getting one and done so while the fitness dose is going to be there easily there may be some strategy or some other things involved that just kind of are going to make you tag all your friends on Instagram when you see the posts come out. And that's like going to really drive you guys to be excited about these pieces. So I took a little extra care in writing the, the one conditioning piece a day, you know, that's not bitch work. And I think you'll uh, find that what I'm saying is true. <clears throat> it's fun and sexy and it'll be a good time. So, effective. <laughs> overly effective some days. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Warm-ups are really straightforward. Again, we always encourage you guys to add in your own parts to the warm-up if you have specific mobility or things you need to work on. Um, there's an article, again, we're shooting this in the future, either out or coming out about how you should spend your five minutes before you mm. work on, uh, or before you work out on specific movement prep, mobility, things like that. Before you can read the article one. and uh, give you some ideas as to what you should do, not just before you work out or have a session but before each and every piece, the things you should think about before you really commit to that 80% set of something or that four rounds of this, just things you can do that will really make a difference for you in the long run if you commit to them. And yeah, I mean, that's cycle one. One uh, thing I do want to clarify with the season shift, um, the cycles on the blog are still tapering <laughs> us for the open. Yes, right? correct. So yeah, I just wanted to clarify. We it's didn't still discuss that yep. last time. That's still the... The training season. Yeah, that is. And of course, the, the competition prep, as he mentioned, still available post open. There'll be version 2.0 and then probably post, you'll say post February, there'll be or March, there'll be version 3.0. And every six months or so, we'll continue to put out a new version of competition prep with similar volume, very similar goals, obviously, slightly more specific, depending on if we know certain competitions are coming up. For example, if Wadapalooza is on the horizon for volume two, we know for a fact there will be swimming, coupled with something else most likely. So you will find more pieces like that. Little tweaks, but overall, uh, the same feeling. And also a lot of you guys are going to follow at least one of these a year, if not both of them, depending on what kind of competitor you are. I don't want you going through the same six weeks over and over and over again. That's dry, yeah. That's dry, and eventually 
not overly effective. You yeah, need to, to continue anymore. to Isn't mix that it up. Weird. Isn't what? that really weird that our sports that way? That every other sport ever is like this same, ball goes in that yeah, hole. Same practice. <laughs> like you yeah. should probably be in shape, but essentially the ball goes in the hole. Yeah, you dribble it around, or you do, you know you kick it through those. Or like <laughs> it's so weird that <laughs> even though there's a about? ridiculous <laughs> amount of variance over the course of an eight week thing, like you would remember that. You know, oh, that yeah. one on that oh. random Wednesday where you're like, fuck you, man. Yeah. Like, I can't do it again. I'm I can't not, do it again. Exactly. I did one too many sets on that. Yeah, it's funny because if, if you've experienced something that could be very similar to 100 pieces you've done and you just have such a emotional connection to that one piece, you're unwilling to get yourself to get up and do it again. But if it's something you haven't experienced and it's new, you're willing to throw yourself out there and see what happens in it. And that's sort of how we train. So we, you'll continue to get new ones and... It's that's, like that that's thrust every box jump workout. I used to start regional prep every yeah. single year. <laughs> Four like, years in a row. Oh, damn yeah. it, not again. I mean, look at 19.5. People are like, oh yeah. man, I really didn't think 10 minutes of Fran would be different than two. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Same thing, right? Weird. <laughs> Shit. There's some pull-ups. Go, baby. Let's do it. <laughs> I didn't even finish and I'm still slightly sore from two weeks ago. <laughs> your, your time's still going? My time is still going and my quads still hurt. Okay. That's what I got. Uh, uh, Uno Mas. One, mo- what, one what, more. What do you have? Teamisfit.com, the affiliate Ooh. programming track. So the competitor program will follow, uh, will coincide with cycle one of the blog. So with like with the changes happening to the blog, the Misfit Wad, um, couldn't really think of a better time. If you're like if your community is is some misfits at like a little bit, whether you're masters, teens, blog followers, hatchet, affiliate, like really good time. Bring to bring together. the whole community together, regardless of what track you're following. There will be a uh, crossover from the competitor program to cycle one. Those cycles will follow along exactly with the blog. Um, so just like a really good time to get everybody on the same page, keep the whole community together, which is like, that's, that's the purpose of the Misfit Wad is to get your entire community on track together, regardless yeah. of what what your fitness level so is. So just to clarify, you might have already said this and I glazed over it. Uh, so will the competitor program most days have its own version of Misfit Wad built in or how does that work for gyms that are interested in like, they look at the blog and then they get their program from you? Yeah, we'll still pull the Misfit Wad uh, and make sure that is is replicated somewhere in that day's worth of programming. You'll still get the three training pieces a day whether or not you structure that in a one hour or an hour and a half class, uh, we'll make sure that the Misfit WOD is still part of the competitor program. So if you're following it, just like, hey, Instagram, here's the Misfit WOD, I want to do this, or you're getting the full package with the competitor program, the Misfit WOD will, will live there as well. Cool. So, yeah. Wow. It's going to be pretty crazy. I'm excited to see how this plays out. So, anything else? No, sir. Let's go get it. I love this cycle. I love coaching the cycle. I don't love participating in oh, any part you of the cycle. Know, yeah. you, know you, you know that I didn't yeah, mean yeah. that. I, don't, yeah, I ain't doing this cycle. I'm not participating. Come on, Come on now. I'm, I'll do a lot of Mr. Wad. My version of Mr. Wad. That's Same. about it. I'll do yep. a lot of that. All right, guys. Uh, until next time, we'll be chatting mm. about cycle two and who knows what else. So see y'all soon.